Hey guys, welcome to um, Revelation. We can't say welcome to Laodicean now. We have finished Laodicean churches. We have um, moved now into the prophetic part of the book of Revelation. So we're going to pray. Uh, ask God to help us understand these things because obviously no one knows exactly how to interpret the book of Revelation 100% accurately because it hasn't happened yet. It's the only book in the Bible that hasn't happened yet, okay? Hasn't been fulfilled yet. And so, obviously, right now, we're just interpreting prophecy without it actually happening. So, we're kind of back into the days of the scribes in the Old Testament that were waiting for prophecies to happen and weren't exactly sure how they were going to happen. Um, they just had a few details that the Bible gives. And so, that's how we're looking at this as well. Um, I used to always say, well, we're not going to really be here for most of it, so it's no biggies, okay? But it is important to learn to be, like this person says in this book, um, we're going to read right now, to be a student of prophecy, okay? Because why? Well, I think because it keeps our mind on what's coming, right? Um, what was the verse yesterday in um, Philippians 4, right? Let your moderation be known um, unto men. The Lord's coming is at hand. Okay, it's imminent. It's coming soon. All the prophecies have been fulfilled. We just don't know what soon means, okay? Because Paul said it was at hand hundreds of years ago. John did the same thing, thinking that the world looked like it was as bad as it's going to get. Now, we say the same thing. It looks like the world's as bad as it's going to get. Um, but we do believe that we're in the Laodicean church age, so we do believe that there is no more church age to come, to come down to, and we're not missing, and we're not waiting for much. So being a student of prophecy helps us to remember that, right? The New Testament tells us that we need to be watching that a wise person, if they know that um, someone's going to come to their house, is going to be watching for that person, right? And um, that's the same thing with us. If we know Jesus is coming, we need to act like Jesus is coming, right? Because the day that he comes and calls you up and you stand in front of him, you don't get any more chances to live like you want to for him in thankfulness to him. So this is our opportunity. This is our chance. Every day that we get is a gift from God. And we either decide to take advantage of that gift and use it for good or use it for ourselves. Right? So we decide. So let's pray and then we'll get started. Dear Lord, thank you for the opportunity to have your word and to have the book of Revelation, Lord, because it keeps our mind on the fact that you're coming and you want us to be prepared. And you want it to be a warning to those that don't want to humble themselves and become a Christian yet. I just pray that you work in those people's hearts and that you work in us to help those people understand the necessity and the importance of making sure that their souls will go to heaven when they die. We love you so much in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so look what it says on page 180. By the way, I want to um, try to remember to send these with you guys. Not only are you going to be able to keep the, the copies of the book that I gave you, right, which I hope that you do because this is important information and sometimes it's hard to find information on Revelation. And so we think, oh, we'll be able to come across that information again. Not only is there's not a lot of information out there that you can trust, you know, and get your hands on easily. I've given this out before and I want to give it out again. This is also a really good timeline, the Revelation prophecy chart. Okay, so I'm going to send these in your packets for you guys to keep as well. It kind of tells you the breakdown of um, where in Revelation you're going to find these events happen and give you a little summary of the events um, on the back, okay? So today we're going to be in um, pages 180 to 185, learning about the rapture of the church, okay? If you look in your um, Bible in Revelation 4, this is where Bible scholars, Bible experts get the rapture that they say that the church is now gone i will tell you that um there are differing views of this okay we're not going to go into the different differing views of your post tribulation pre tribulation mid tribulation which means that some christians believe that christians will leave before tribulation okay that's what i believe that we will be taken from um taken with Jesus to heaven before the tribulation happens. Some people believe it's going to happen halfway through the tribulation. Some people say that we're going to suffer through the tribulation and go at the end. Okay. 
like we said, we can't know 100%, but we can take um, the people that have the information that we agree with and be persuaded one way or the other. So I have always been convinced that we are pre-tribulation, which means that Christ is not going to leave us here on earth to suffer through some of the tribulation. Okay. Um, but not everyone believes that. So for those that believe that believe that on verses one and two of chapter four, this is where we see the church get taken up according to John's vision. Look what it says. Después de esto mire y he aquí una puerta abierta en el cielo y la primera voz que oí como de trompeta, which is why they think that this is where, um, the trumpet of Jesus calling the church up. Hablando conmigo, dijo, sube acá y yo te mostraré las cosas que sucederán después de estas. Y al instante yo estaba en el Espíritu y aquí un trono establecido en el cielo y el trono uno sentado. Okay, so you can look at page 181. Page 181 has this little um, table right here showing you that the way that the rapture of the church, the way that we are going to go up into heaven at the end times if we are still on the earth, right? And then our bodies also, if we're dead, then our bodies will come up at the same time. It's described in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17, which by the way, I'm going to read it to you really quickly. I wasn't going to go to a lot of different verses today, but I do want to show you this one. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 through 17 says, Porque el Señor mismo con voz de mando, con voz de arcángel, y con trompeta de Dios, descenderán del cielo y los muertos en Cristo resucitarán primero. Luego, nosotros los que vivimos, los que hayamos quedado, será, seremos arrebatados juntamente con ellos en las nubes para recibir al Señor en el aire y así estaremos siempre con el Señor. So, that is the um, description of the, of the rapture of the Christians in the end times. So this little table here describes that that's what John's vision was, okay? John heard a voice. There's a voice mentioned in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17. John heard a trumpet. So does the description of the rapture of the church in 1 Thessalonians 4, 4 right? Um, it says to, for John to come up. And then it says in 1 Thessalonians 4 that we will be caught up. Okay, so that's why they believe that verse 1 and two of chapter four is the rapture of the church. Okay, but let's look at page 180, the interpreting prophecy. It says the Bible student's responsibility is to study scripture. Comparing scripture with scripture, ask God for wisdom and learn from those who study scripture. Students, who, students of prophecy always remain students of prophecy. God's choicest servants often differ with other choice servants in their interpretation of prophetic passages. So we're all going <clears> to <throat> disagree somewhere when it comes to prophecy. Okay, that's okay. But this person says that's no excuse to avoid the study of prophecy. God promises a blessing to those who read and can keep the prophecy of the book of Revelation. This clearly indicates that God desires his children to be interested in his revealed plan for the church and encourages his servants to study the book of the Revelation. Most prophetic passages can be taken literally. Passages that are symbolic usually have clues that indicate such. There are pa passages that puzzle the reader, but those same passages when read by believers during the tribulation will probably be clearly understood. I don't understand what she meant, why that, what this person meant by that, because I don't think we will be reading the Bible during the tribulation. But anyway, since future events in Revelation 4 to 22 have not yet occurred, it is unwise to speak dogmatically regarding their interpretation. Dogmatically means that don't say that it's doctrine. It's not doctrine what comes out of chapters 4 through 22 because it hasn't happened yet. Okay, we're just observing and interpreting. So, Look back on page 181. Remember the outline of the book that we got from Revelation 119. I'm going to go there really quickly again. Revelation 119 says what? What? Escribe las cosas que has visto y las que son y las que han de ser después de estas. Okay? So remember, chapter 1 was about que has visto. Chapter 2 
And three, that was the church age that we've been studying for meses, yeah? Okay, that was the seven churches. Those were the um, the part of the outline that said, y las que son. But now, chapters 4 through 22 are going to talk about las que es an de ser después de estas. It's your future events, okay? There's a nice little timeline down here as well to kind of reference the whole time, right? <clears throat> so what you're going to be reading through pages 181 and 185 today is what is the rapture? What is the rapture? So what I want you to do is I want you to read through these pages, find five things that you did not know before about the rapture, okay? Now remember, I'm gonna tell you, it's okay if you don't agree with everything here. What if you learn something different from your church? Well, this is an opportunity to see another interpretation, okay? And for you to decide what seems to be more plausible, like what could happen, right? But, um. In the end, remember, it's interpretation of prophecy. There's no doctrine that is taken from here. So there's nothing that bad that can happen to us if we don't understand everything, as long as we don't create doctrine from it, right? Okay, like you must believe this to be saved or this changes how we're saved or this changes how we look at Jesus. No, none of that stuff is gonna happen because it's this prophecy that's going to happen at the end of the world, okay? So I want you to write five things that you didn't know observations about on um, the rapture whether or not you agree or disagree and you can tell me right but um it's up to you about the rapture about what it is and then what i want you to do is i want you to write eight sentences what is the rapture of the church okay you don't have to discuss that it's going to come before tribulation during tribulation after tribulation if you're not comfortable with that okay but here's some good information i do and it's, it's easy to understand, you guys. You can go to the verses if you want to. That might help you. Okay, but there's a lot of them that are already written out in the book for you, but in English. So you might want to look them up in your in Spanish since that is where you study the Bible the most. Okay? Um, you look at page 184, God's time clock for Israel. I just want to kind of introduce this because it can get a little confusing sometimes. We talked about this before once. once. Daniel, the book of Daniel, has a lot of prophecy of the end times, okay? So while most of the people were, and well, really back in those times of the prophecies, there's a, a few prophets that would be prophesying for something that was just about to happen to Israel, plus the end times, okay? And Daniel is one of those prophets that talked about the end times a lot. But it gets a little confusing because he always mentions 70 weeks, okay? Well, to us, weeks are seven days. Bible scholars have, and a lot of them agree with this, have concluded that in this case, the Hebrew word for week is seven, which that's where we get our seven days, okay? But in this case, in Daniel, it's in the context of years. So every time that Daniel mentions a week, it's seven years, okay? So basically, if you go through the, these two pages, what you're gonna, I'm just gonna help you out with the math here, just so you're like, what are you talking about? Because I had to read this twice. I read it last night and then I read it this morning. I'm like, okay, let's get this through my head. What they're saying is, is that in Daniel is where they get the fact that there's gonna be seven years of tribulation, okay? So seven years of tribulation on this earth. People can't decide whether or not the Christians are gonna be there. I don't believe they will be, okay? I believe we'll already be in heaven. But when they talk about it, they say, okay, look, Daniel mentions 70 um, weeks, so that's 70 times 7, that's 490 years, okay? So a lot of Bible scholars believe that Daniel is prophesying about 490 years. What is going to happen with those 490 years? Well, if you look at page 185, number 1, 7 of those weeks, so 49 of those years, had to do with um, the restoration of Jerusalem, okay? So... Those 49 years have already happened. Then the 62 more weeks, so that'd be 62 times 7, that's 434 years, is where, um, is where Dan, the book, hmm, is where Israel got cut off. Remember that um, God said he wasn't going to send a prophet again. Israel got um, cut off. It says right here in Daniel 9, 26. And after three score and two weeks, shall my, the Messiah be cut off 
Christ crucified, but not for himself. So what happened? God stopped sending prophets. That happened for like 400 years. Then Jesus was on the earth. Then he was crucified. That 434 years between when God stopped sending prophets, but then Jesus was crucified, they say that was part of the prophecy. So now we've accomplished 49 years with the restoration of Jerusalem. We've um, already seen 434 years with the cutting off of Israel and Jesus being crucified. So now how many years do we have left? We only have seven years left. We only have one more week left. And that seven years, they believe Daniel was prophesying about the tribulation. Okay, so that's where all that math and um, years and weeks and 490 and all that stuff comes into play. They believe it was prophesying three things. Restoration of Jerusalem, cutting off of Israel with Jesus being crucified, and the tribulation. So all that we have left in Daniel to, be, um, to happen is the tribulation. Seven years. That's where they get that. Just to let you know. Okay, that trans transitions us into tomorrow's reading, which is the tribulation. Okay, but it's not something that you actually need to include in your, your summary for the rapture. It's just part of your reading. Okay, and if you want to include it there, you can. Okay, so listen again, five things that you learned about the rapture or observed or never heard about before. And what is the rapture of the church in eight sentences? Thank you. Bye.